in a way which is nothing new because I think there has not been one day in my life where there was no war in the world somewhere, you know. And in that way we should always, you know, remember, okay, we need to be compassionate for whoever is affected by it because of the suffering that they experience. Now we always have to be aware that this suffering is unreal, nobody dies, nobody is nobody's mother or father, so in that way the suffering is unreal, but of course the feeling of suffering is experienced as real, and in that way we have to be kind, and we have to try to avoid any unnecessary suffering, and we can try to help those who suffer. You know? So, in that way, all nothing special, but of course, this war is a little bit special in the sense that it has the potential to grow. You know? It has the potential to grow into something more, into, you could say, World War Three or something. You know? Because, okay, of different mechanisms which are there, uh, with the different alliances and, and so on. So, okay, that's pretty scary and in a way something new. The main thing I feel, especially looking at the reactions of people, is that such events you know, should not make us doubt, should not make us lose confidence in spiritual growth and in yeah, the power of the divine. You know? I have said this many times, humanity needs time needs time to evolve, needs time to grow spiritually. I have explained already also quite a few times that given the population growth of the past decades, we can say that more than half of the human population today is in their first human incarnation. And most of them, they are coming from the animal kingdom. So, we don't want to say anything wrong about animals, but it's a different ball game, you know, having this brain, giving us so much more ability to choose, giving us so much more ability to reason, giving us a certain freedom which we need to learn how to handle. So, we will discuss also about this spiritual evolution, how it is actually quite predestined in the system of the chakras related to the elements, uh, how desires naturally mature, actually, but it needs time, you know? and so we cannot enforce peace, we cannot enforce love, we can only inspire it, and then see who is willing to follow, you know? and not lose our faith in the power of the divine to actually you know, be the most attractive thing in the world, you know? even though many do not see it, but the divine truly is the most attractive thing in the world and ultimately will also attract everyone. You know? But it takes time. And so in the meantime, we have to deal with this. And I would say, yes, each in our own way, we have to fight. You know? And okay, we should in this way also not look in disdain upon those who are taking this quite literally and truly are now fighting to defend their land and their home. Remember the very famous discussion between Krishna and Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. It's one of the most famous discussions of Hinduism, and it is precisely about this, where Arjuna does not want to fight, you know, because many of his opponents are actually friends and family. But Krishna says, no, no. Injustice has been done, injustice has to be stopped, you are a warrior, it is your duty to fight. So in that way, uh, okay, I don't know, if a Russian tank comes rolling here into my backyard, I don't know, maybe I also fight. <laughs> but in the meantime, there are many ways no, in which we can uh, resist. No? And of course, there from Gandhi, no, we have gotten this beautiful idea of nonviolent resistance, which is anyhow, I think, the best way to resist. But okay, sometimes negativity, anger, hatred, greed, it needs to be stopped. And so in that way, we do what we can and we do what we have to and we do what we feel we are able to do. 
And I think the main effect that this news had on me, now almost one month ago, is that, yeah, I felt, okay, time to step up my game, no? walk the talk, meditate more, practice more, create more peace in myself. Both as a response, you can say, to this increase of violence and hatred that we can see there, but also definitely because only in that way I can survive this. <laughs> because if truly the world is now headed for some really unstable period, then we will need to be strong then we will need to be focused. Then we will need to have our things, you know, in order. And that starts here, you know, and here in our heart. And so that is mainly, I think, what I would advise anybody who feels a bit like very worried now or whatever, upset maybe. Okay, do what you want, do what you can, do what you feel you should do. There are many things that you can do, actually, in this situation. There are many refugees <laughs> that need a place to sleep, you know, for starters. So there are many things we can do, but the main thing that we have to do is to increase our inner peace and then share it with others. Then we are a little bit there, running out of excuses, you know. We all have many excuses not to meditate. <laughs> but in times of war, we have to be strong. No excuses. And no fear also. Let it not be an excuse to be more stressed, more fearful, more uncertain. If we see that this is happening inside of us, that should be our motivation no? to do more and connect more with our immortality you know? and in that way remain fearless and purposeful and disciplined in our mind and having love in our heart. Ah.